it's me again. Back again. All right. So this video is, I hope, kind of my culminating uh, input to the RV to COE discussion. Uh, I'm calling this the RV to COE speed run. Uh, and that's because this doesn't, uh, if you find yourself with an R and a V vector that are, you know, you take the dot product and they're uh, zero, they're perpendicular, that is to say, uh, then you can actually speed run these RV to COE problems like a boss. So I'm going to set up just kind of a quick uh, checklist for you here. And, uh, and then I'm actually going to do a test run and we'll time it and see how long this actually has to take. Not has to take, how, how short a time this could take with an R cross V problem on a GR. So without further ado, let's start working through that. Okay, so first step. When you roll up on an R cross V to COE's problem, first thing you want to know is this. Are those two suckers perpendicular? Is the R dot V equal to zero? Because if so, you can speed run. If not, you have to use the math way. You can call it the long way. math way. Some math is always going to be involved, but again, there's a shortcut here greatly if you can, if you roll up on a problem that R dot V is zero. So let's say it is. Next step, start cranking through what the magnitude of R vector is, what the magnitude of V vector is, Once you got those, plug them into the epsilon equation so that you can find A. What I mean by that? Well, this bad boy. Remember, epsilon is equal to a whole bunch of stuff. You don't really need to know what the epsilon is. You just need this equivalency right here. Cool. Mm, not satisfied with that. Need a better shape. There we go. Once you got your A, you're going to do this test, if you will. You're going to compare where your current position is to how big your orbit is. Some major axis to your position vector, R to A. Zoom in here a little bit. Here's your test. If your current position is bigger than A, you're going to be out at apogee. If your current position is smaller than A, you're going to be at perigee. If your R is the same as your A, you just so happen to be in a circular orbit that doesn't have an apogee or a perigee. But instead of calling it a circle, I'll call it circular orbit. There we go. Okay, once you got that, if you know which of apogee or perigee you're at, I mean, you'll be able to find that. You'll be able to use these equations, one of the two, you make your pick based on if you're at apogee or perigee, to reverse engineer E out of that. Okay. And then, based on if you're at apogee or perigee, mm, how's a better way to put this? Based on step five, or four and five, I guess, you'll know if you're at apogee or perigee, and if you're at perigee, that's where we measure a true anomaly from. So your true anomaly is going to be zero degrees. And if you're at apogee, you'll always have a true anomaly of 180. Those are just definitionally properties of apogee and perigee. If you're perigee, you're right on top of perigee. You have a true anomaly of zero. 
And if you're halfway around the orbit, your true anomaly is 180. So we call that apogee. Your last step is a little bit of art, if you will. You'll draw yourself a 3D axis like this. In case you're not given one, a lot of tests I've seen give you one of these printed out, which is nice. Like it's just next, to the, it's there next to the text of the problem. I'll show you what I mean. So you're going to draw your R and V vectors to get I, oops, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's good that I made that mistake. I without a hat is inclination. We also want ran. We also want argument of perigee. So having said that, those are our steps. And uh, without much further ado here, here's my example problem that we're going to do. So let's say, and this is exactly what it'll look like on a GR. This is actually taken from an old uh, GR that you all have uh, access to. We provide a bunch of old GRs just for your, for your reference and for practice. They're an excellent um, way to hone your uh, confidence and skills on especially R cross V and, and all the other topics that you might encounter. So... Okay, uh, we'll start the clock here, and got my calculator right here. Ready, set, go. Okay, oh man, Mr. VGR, I need to really minimize time. Oh man, I got an R cross V problem, oh no. All right, well, let's first do our first step. I like to rewrite the equation if it's missing any variables, just so I can easily do the dot product. Remember if like there's, <laughs> there's nothing given on the R vector besides the I hat vector. What does that mean? Well, it means that zeros are there for J and for K. Okay, cool. Um, get rid of that. I'm speed running, I'm speed running. So zero I for the velocity vector plus 2.75 J plus 2.75 K. Nice. I should probably give myself some more room, but we can erase that. Okay. These two multiplied zero. These two multiplied zero. These two multiplied zero. Okay. So R dotted with V zero. Awesome. We can speed run. Okay. Let's get the magnitude of R and the magnitude of V. Square that plus zero squared plus zero squared is 17285. Awesome. Velocity vector is zero squared plus 2.75 squared plus 2.75 squared. Parentheses. Not hugely important for a zero, but we like to be complete. Okay, calculating. And the velocity vector I get 3.889. Of course, we get units of kilometers and kilometers per second. I just like to keep it straight. Okay, now time to find A. We know that epsilon is equal to V squared over 2 minus mu over R. It's also equal to negative mu over 2A. This is straight off your equation sheet. And I don't really care what epsilon is. I just need to know that all those things are equal to each other. I'm going to quickly rearrange this equation. I'm going to start plugging and chugging as you do. Over to velocity vector was 3.889 squared over 2 minus myself more room here three eight six zero zero point five over what was my r seventeen two eighty five remember i got that just from the previous step right here oh gosh i've identified a mistake real quick and this could happen during a gr so i will do that it's seventeen two fifty eight Okay, glad we identified that before we mashed it into the calculator. 
So this speed run will include a mistake, and I'll still prove to you you can do it fast. Sweet. All right. Squared. Nine by two. Two five eight. There we go. Furiously jamming numbers into my calculator. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, I get that our some major axis is equal to 12, 829.938 kilometers. All right, now let's do the test. R, how big the R vector is, is 17,258. A is 12,829.938. R is bigger than A. According to our test above, if R is bigger than A, we're at Apogee. Okay, meaning I've got my A. In fact, I suppose we can fill them in as we go here, but always remembering units, please. All right, now we're going to use the R sub A equals A times 1 plus E equation. And let's see. A equals 1 plus E, E equals R A over A minus 1 equals, remember our R that we have is actually our R at Apogee, right? It's the same thing because we established we are at Apogee because whew, because R is bigger than A. Okay, keep going. Over 12, 8, 29.938 minus 1. Zero point three four five for eccentricity. Cool. It's pretty eccentric, actually. All right. Now, <coughs> according to our test above, if we are at apogee, which we are, remember, so we are at apogee, we use this equation, and our true anomaly is 180 because definitionally at apogee, the true anomaly is 180. So I'm just going to fill that in. Three out of six ain't bad. Well, we can do better. Okay, now it's time to draw. Of course, I made myself a mess here. Let me restore my workspace here. Okay, time to draw. Our vector is all 100% in the I hat direction, positive I hat. So there is R. We'll zoom in on this. And our V vector they say is, let's do green, equal measure in J hat positive and K hat positive. So let's see, there's here, here's some positive J hat and here's the same amount roughly, oh man, I'm trying to draw a dotted line, about the same amount of positive K hat meaning that if we start, here's our little satellite, right? Because the position vector points to that. Good, this green vector will be our V vector. So satellite is that little shape that I drew. I could even make it bigger, right? Make it kind of bigger just so you can see. I'll fill it in. Cool. All right, so what can we tell? about inclination and ran and argument of perigee. Okay, well, let's see. I have some positive J and some positive K. And what that tells me is that, let's see, they're equal in measure. Now, again, a little, little math would tell us that this is, a little trig would tell us that this angle right here is 45 degrees. That angle happens to be our inclination because the motion of our satellite is equal parts J hat and K hat. 
Um, and so that just gives us a perfect inclination of, of 45 degrees. Sweet, fill that in. I'll even keep it green. Ran, well, what is ran? Ran is the angle between I hat and the N vector. Well, let's see, are we at a node right now? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Are we at a node? I'm gonna argue yes, because the satellite's position right here is on I hat, right? The position is 100% positive I hat, meaning we are touching I hat right now and we are not anywhere else. We're not positive K, we're not positive J. We're moving that direction, that's what V tells us, but we're not positive, uh, or sorry, we're, we are 100% positive I hat. I hat and J hat, remember, are trapped in the equatorial plane. So our satellite basically was coming up from below here and it happened to just now hit the equator at this point right here. So we call that the ascending node. It's rising from south, being above the southern hemisphere to the above the northern hemisphere. So it's that's the ascending node right there. And we also, so let's see, let me give a little bit, just again, and this, you can even speed run this faster because I'm doing a little teaching while I'm doing this, but the nodal vector points towards the ascending node. Ran is, oh boy. Ran is the angle between I hat and the nodal vector. Well, look, those two suckers are right on top of each other. That means Ran zero. Awesome. Okay, what about argument of perigee? Okay, well, starting off at the ascending node and measuring around to, let's see, I'll use yellow, measuring around to where perigee is, that's how we get the argument of perigee angle. And so uh, we established right now at this position, we're at apogee. So measuring from the ascending node around basically to over here, how do I put this? Currently we're at Apogee. The ascending node happens to be Apogee. We know that why, because we did our tests from before. We let's see, sorry, let me keep jumping around. We established we're at Apogee because our R greater than A test, and that gave us a true anomaly of 180. So that's nice. We got that going for us. But also it tells us our current position is on top of Apogee. And so if we're measuring from the ascending node, around to where perigee is. That's what argument of perigee is. That's what we're focusing on right now. So don't forget. So measuring from the ascending node around to where perigee is, remember perigee is 180 degrees away from apogee. This gives us an argument of perigee of 180. Because right now we're at the ascending node. But the ascending node also happens to be apogee. So from the ascending node around to where perigee is, that's about 180 degrees. Not exa It's exactly 180 degrees. Yahtzee, we did it. Done, done, and done. With a minimum of math involved. Boom.